It's been a pretty huge year for Mad Max, with the excellent Fury Road hitting the big screen, and now a new game, simply titled Mad Max, from Just Cause developer Avalanche Studios. This game is completely standalone, so you will not need to be familiar with the franchise to play Mad Max. However, if you have seen the movies, you will definitely get more out of seeing the way that Avalanche have recreated this world. The world is in fact the strongest part of Mad Max. Avalanche have done an incredible job capturing the feeling of the barren wasteland that makes the film so recognisable. Driving through this world, you really gain an appreciation for the level of care that has gone into the environments. The game is very pretty and nails the desert aesthetic in the same way Uncharted 3 and Journey did, which is no small feat. But this would mean nothing without strong gameplay to back up this incredible world, which is where Mad Max shows some cracks. The core gameplay of Mad Max can be split into two, the car combat and the on-foot exploration of camps and outposts. Let's start with the car combat, which is a lot of fun. Once you start upgrading your car, the magnum opus, it just gets better and better. The car combat shines because of one thing, variety. You can take down other cars in a multitude of ways. Upgrade your car's grill and just ram into vehicles to damage them. Upgrade your harpoon and tear the enemy's cars apart piece by piece or add some flamethrowers to the magnum opus and incinerate enemy cars. This is just a few of the ways you can deal with enemy vehicles. The on-foot sections are fine at first, but do get repetitive. The hand-to-hand -hand combat feels like a dumbed-down version of the Arkham Games combat system, and always comes down to mash the square button until the counter icon pops up above an enemy's head, and then hit triangle to reverse their attacks. And all the camps are very similar. You'll need to either destroy the enemy's oil machines or kill every enemy in the camp, and these do not have multiple ways of tackling them. So coming off of Metal Gear, which is so heavy on tackling enemy bases in literally dozens if not hundreds of ways, this is disappointing, and it's the opposite of the variety in car combat. The story is nothing of note. Essentially, it revolves around Max having his vehicle stolen and being left for dead in the wasteland after an attack from a convoy led by the game's antagonist, Scabarus Scrotus. Max then is left to build a new, even better car, which may not be a particularly strong story, but it doesn't need to be. Mad Max is more about the world than it is Max himself, and that makes the game feel different from other open world games. The one other problem I had with Mad Max was some of the controls. When driving a vehicle, it controls perfectly, everything is mapped to where you would expect, However, when on foot, Max's shotgun is mapped to the circle button, which feels really unnatural and ended up with me wasting a lot of ammo. It's also worth noting that the world of Mad Max is huge, with a lot of camps, scarecrows and sniper towers to destroy if you want to. It's far from perfect, but I can definitely see myself coming back to Mad Max to finish clearing out the map. Mad Max is a fun but very repetitive game. I'm giving Mad Max a 7. If you enjoyed my review, Please like and subscribe or follow me on Twitter at Chris Fremo.